Tao, in the conversations I've had during Mobile World Congress around 6G, one thing keeps coming up, and that's integrated sensing and communication. So to start, maybe you could just sort of explain to us what that is. So that's a good question. So integrated sensing and communication, which means you can leverage existing cellular infrastructure for the sensing and the communication. Traditional cellular is only for communication. Now you add an additional function for that. That's why it's called integrated sensing and communication. Okay, so it seems like there'd be two sort of primary buckets of use cases for this. One, the network understands its own physical environment so it becomes more adaptable as things around it change. But then you can also use that sensing capability to do other types of services that might be of use to various vertical industries. But can you kind of take us through both of those? Yeah, so first, you can do the sensing assisted communication. You know, you can improve the radio performance by knowing the environments better, you know. For example, the demo we're showing here, you know, they were showing by using this, understand this environments better, you can do better communication. On the other hand, you also have other use case. For example, security, detect the person, you know, or drone detection, flying around. You can track, detect, so you can get better uh, track the, uh, enable this low attitude economy, for example. In, in different countries, you know. So on what sort of timeline should we think about this going from uh, research focus to something that would be a little more real world, a little more tangible? So in some of the cases, it's already happening in some of the uh, country. You know, they're doing the trial for this drone, you know. On the other hand, there's also other more use case, we like more research. So it takes some time to actually they realize the full potential of this one. Then I wanted to also get some uh, perspective from you on uh, wireless AI. So I know this is a, a priority for you and your colleagues. Can you give us a bit of an overview of uh, where your focus today is? Today our focus AI is want to improve the wireless air interface, which means you can do better algorithm, save the energy either at the laptop side or device side, you know, and also potentially even improve the performance. You know. So it's focused on the air interface, the one we're currently doing. And so then, how do you operationalize wireless AI? I guess if you have a, a model of a, of a real network and all of the variability that that entails, you know, how do you, how do you take that and then create that sort of closed loop where you're able to reap the benefit of the adaptability that you put into the network? Yeah, there's a two aspects on this one. One is called a model switching. So when you move to one scenario to another scenario, for example, urban to suburban, you may want to do the model switching. You have a different model has been trained. You know? On the other hand, I also want to say there's on-device training. You continuous learning, just like a human. You get more information, you update your model, and use it immediately. So is it fair to think of it as a uh, device to network continuum where there's intelligence throughout and it's uh, continuing to learn, continuing to adapt and improve? Yes, that would be best to optimize your performance and also <laughs> provide a lot of advantage to be able to scale this AI, uh, AML model for your interface. All right, very good. Well, Tao, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to tell us about the work you and your colleagues are doing. Thank you so much.